There's nothing quite like starting your morning with a cold, zesty glass of orange juice. It's like bottling up a ray of sunshine and sipping it straight from the sky. In fact, Americans guzzle down over 500 million gallons of this citrusy gold every single year. And no, they don't slow down even when oranges are out of season. But keeping the juice flowing year-round isn't as simple as plucking a few fruits off a tree. It's a symphony of advanced farming, scientific wizardry, and pinpoint timing. Way more high-tech than you'd ever expect. From the sun-drenched groves all the way to that satisfying final pour, we're about to peel back the layers of what it takes to deliver that perfect glass of orange juice. It all begins with location. In the U.S., the two reigning champs of citrus are Florida and California. These sunny states offer the ideal mix of warm temperatures and seasonal rain, crafting the perfect recipe for plump, juicy oranges. For decades, Florida wore the crown as America's top orange juice producer. But lately, Mother Nature had other plans. Since 2005, Florida's orange groves have been battered by rampaging hurricanes and an unforgiving plant disease called citrus greening. Think of it as the supervillain of the fruit world. The damage? A jaw-dropping 75% drop in production. As Florida struggled, California stepped in to squeeze out more juice. Still, even with California's best efforts, they can't quite quench America's never-ending thirst for that sweet, tangy goodness on their own. To meet the ever-growing thirst for orange juice, U.S. companies have had to widen their horizons. And by that, we mean importing a whole lot more oranges. Leading the global pack? Brazil the heavyweight champion of juice orange exports. Fun fact, next time you pick up a bottle labeled 100% orange juice, chances are you're actually sipping a blend of fruit from both American and Brazilian orchards. Global teamwork at its juiciest. When it comes to squeezing the best out of oranges, only a few varieties make the cut. The MVPs of the juice world are Valencia and Hamlin oranges both famous for their high juice content and bright, tangy flavor. Valencia's reign supreme, making up about 70% of the industry's juice crops. But growers also plant hamlins alongside them to keep production steady all year long, because even oranges need backup dancers sometimes. Here's how their dance routine works. Valencia's bloom in spring, but take their sweet time, around 12 to 15 months, to fully ripen. They're harvested the following year, mostly from March through September, with peak season in the summer. Hamlins, in contrast, are the overachievers. They also bloom in spring, but ripen way faster, ready for harvest within seven to eight months, from October through January. While Hamlins have a milder flavor compared to Valencia's, their juice-rich pulp is just as essential for keeping the presses running smoothly during the off-season. By strategically alternating these two varieties, growers ensure a year-round supply of fresh oranges. So no matter the month, your breakfast OJ is never out of stock. But how do they know when an orange is truly ready for its juicing destiny? Enter the refractometer, a tiny but mighty tool that measures the sugar to water ratio also called the bricks percentage. For oranges to pass the sweetness test, they need at least 10% sugar because nobody's signing up for a glass of med juice. Once the oranges hit the perfect sweetness mark, it's harvest time. In some groves, you'll still spot workers handpicking the fruit with care, gently placing them into bags like precious golden eggs. But for the big leagues, where factories need literal mountains of oranges every day. It's time to bring in the heavy machinery. Since these oranges are destined for juicing, a few cosmetic blemishes aren't a deal breaker. This is where the mechanical harvesters come roaring in. 
Massive machines with vibrating arms sweep through the orchards, shaking trees and sending ripe oranges tumbling onto built-in conveyor belts. The fallen fruit is then transferred into a special vehicle, charmingly called a goat. No, not the greatest of all time kind, but the gather oranges at top speed kind. These goats cruise alongside the harvester, collecting up to two tons per minute. That's over two million oranges a day. Now, you might be wondering, hey, why do some oranges look green? Believe it or not, color isn't a ripeness indicator for oranges. It's all about temperature, not time. Cooler nights turn peels orange, while warmer nights can turn them green again. But don't worry, the green ones are just as ripe and juicy as their orange cousins. They're just rocking a different outfit. Once the harvest is complete, the goats shuttle their loads over to large open-top trailers called gondolas, lined up for easy dumping. One by one, they unload their bounty until the gondola is brimming with around 120,000 oranges, enough to squeeze out roughly 2,700 gallons of fresh juice. Once full, semi-trucks hitch up the gondolas and haul them straight to the processing factories, where the real magic begins and oranges transform into the golden liquid we can't get enough of. Once the trailers packed with oranges roll up to the factory, they're parked in a holding area, patiently waiting their turn, like VIP guests at an exclusive juice party. From there, Hausler trucks haul the trailers over to the unloading zone, where the real action begins. The trailers are positioned onto a massive hydraulic platform. Depending on the factory setup, the platform either tips the trailer sideways at a cool 25 degree angle or lifts it almost vertically. Both methods designed to let good old gravity do the heavy lifting. In a matter of seconds, 120,000 oranges come rushing out in a colorful cascade onto a conveyor belt. And just like that, their journey to becoming orange juice officially kicks off. But before all the oranges zoom ahead, there's a quick pit stop. A trap door in the conveyor randomly opens, capturing a 40-pound sample for quality testing. Inside the on-site lab, technicians analyze these samples for bricks level, the sugar to water ratio, color, and overall quality, all to figure out the best fate for each juicy batch. Oranges testing above 11.5% sugar are reserved for concentrate. The rest are lined up to become single strength juice, which will later be pasteurized to lock in the goodness. While the testing happens behind the scenes, the rest of the oranges keep moving forward into gigantic holding bins, sorted neatly between concentrate and single strength groups. Here, the oranges get a refreshing shower, sprayed with a water and alkaline solution. Then, they tumble across spinning brushes that scrub away any lingering dirt or orchard souvenirs. Only spotless oranges get to move on to the next stage. After their spa day, the fruits enter the pre-sort inspection line. Sharp-eyed inspectors stand alongside the belts, tossing out any damaged, crushed, or rotten oranges. Because even in mass production, quality matters. The good oranges glide ahead and face their next challenge. They pass over a bed of tiny sharp pins, which gently pierce their skins just enough to release the valuable essential oils hidden in their peels. Then, it's time for size sorting. Using a system of rollers, oranges are sorted by diameter. Because even though they're all headed for juicing, fitting the right size orange into the right size machine makes the squeezing process way more efficient. Now that everything's matched up, it's time to extract the juice, or as we like to call it, unlock the treasure inside. Each size sorted orange drops into a specially designed extractor. It's cradled in a cup, sliced neatly in half, and then pressed against a cone-shaped reamer that spins and extracts both the juice and pulp in a smooth, swift move. 
If it looks a little familiar, that's because it's basically a supercharged version of your kitchen juicer. Only this one can crank through 800 oranges a minute. Thanks to this turbocharged process, some factories can produce up to 500,000 gallons of juice a day. Yes, you read that right, half, a million, gallons. But twist and squeeze isn't the only method in town. Some factories use a metal prong system. Oranges are dropped onto sharp prongs. A press comes down and crushes the fruit forcing the juice to flow out while separating the peel and pulp. And what about that pulp? It's not just tossed aside. Nope, it's collected and stored in big metal drums. Later, it's added back into select batches for those who prefer their OJ with a little extra texture, just like a fresh squeezed glass at grandma's house. Now, speaking of leftovers, what happens to all those empty peels? The peels are sent through a rotating auger mill, where they're shredded into a fibrous mix. Then, they're loaded onto trucks and repurposed as nutritious cattle feed, because even cows deserve a little citrus in their life. Earlier, remember those tiny pinpricks on the peels? Those weren't just for fun. The punctured peels release essential oils, which are collected along with additional extracts from the ground-up peels. This oil water mixture is then spun at lightning speeds in a centrifuge, separating the pure orange essential oil from the water. Once purified to 99%, the essential oil becomes an incredibly valuable product, used in everything from cosmetics to food flavoring to aromatherapy. Meanwhile, the orange juice itself gears up for the final leg of its journey. Heading down one of two paths, concentrate or single strength. When it's time to decide the juice's destiny, it follows one of two paths, concentrate or single strength. For the concentrate route, the juice is pumped into giant evaporators that gently remove about 80% of its water. What's left behind is a thick, highly concentrated juice that's frozen into the familiar icy tubes you've probably seen chilling in grocery store freezers. Meanwhile, for single-strength juice, the journey is a little different. It undergoes a special process called flash pasteurization, a quick but crucial step to keep the juice safe and flavorful while it waits for bottling. Here's how it works. First, the juice is rapidly heated to 185 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to wipe out harmful bacteria. Then, just as quickly, it's cooled down to a crisp 35 degrees Fahrenheit to lock in its fresh, sunny taste. Because there are no additives involved, this juice earns the right to wear the proud label 100% orange juice. Once pasteurized, the juice gets comfy inside massive 1 million gallon refrigerated tanks, where it can stay fresh for up to two years with hardly any flavor loss. Pretty impressive for something that started out on a tree branch. Fun fact, the flash pasteurization method was pioneered in the 1950s by Tropicana's founder, Anthony Rossi and his team. Before that breakthrough, most orange juice sold in the U.S. came from concentrate, making this invention a total game changer for juice lovers everywhere. Before anything is bottled, though, there's a final checkpoint. Multiple samples are drawn from those gigantic storage tanks and whisked away to the lab for rigorous testing. Here, scientists analyze everything from acidity, sugar content bricks level, aroma, color, and most importantly, taste. Even the pulp is carefully checked for quality before it's blended back in. Because yes, it's time to talk about pulp. The previously collected pulp is sent to rework tanks, where it's thoroughly mixed back into the juice. This creates a smooth, uniform texture that can be customized based on different pulp preferences. Some like their juice silky and pulp-free, Others want some pulp for that classic homemade feel. And a few brave souls out there say, give me all the pulp you've got. 
Question for you. Which team are you on? No pulp, some pulp, or lots of pulp? Drop your answer in the comments below. After months of ripening under the sun and careful crafting in the factory, the juice is finally ready for its final chapter, bottling. The process kicks off with tiny plastic preforms. Think miniature bottle shapes that are gently warmed using infrared light to make them soft and pliable. Then, a blow molding machine comes in, inflating the preforms into full-sized 14-ounce bottles in just a few seconds. It's like watching a balloon animal artist at work, but for juice bottles. Once molded, the bottles head through a final rinse cycle, where they're thoroughly sprayed and cleaned to make sure they're spotless and safe. Now ready for filling, the bottles are carefully topped off in two stages. First, a small amount of flash pasteurized juice is poured in at about 176 degrees Fahrenheit to prepare the bottle. Then, the rest of the juice is added to complete the fill, minimizing any foam buildup and keeping things smooth. And just like that, the journey from orchard to bottle nears its triumphant end. A built-in scale at the neck holder automatically verifies the weight of each bottle ensuring no overfills slip through. Once filled, the bottles glide along the conveyor to a machine that snaps on the caps in the blink of an eye. Next, the bottles pass under high-speed cameras and UV lights. These systems instantly check for leaks, loose caps, or any irregularities. Nothing escapes their watchful eyes. Still warm from the filling process, the bottles then roll onto their sides. This clever move lets the hot juice thoroughly sterilize the neck and inner cap areas, guaranteeing a clean, safe seal. After sterilization, the bottles head into a cooling station, where soft sprays of water gently bring them down to room temperature. Now perfectly cooled, the bottles continue to the labeling station, where each one gets its final touch. A label displaying the brand, product information, and nutritional facts. From here, the labeled bottles are grouped into packs and sent through a shrink tunnel. Inside, they're tightly wrapped together, creating compact, easy-to-handle bundles. The shrink-wrapped packs are then carefully stacked onto pallets, forming neat, transport-ready towers. To secure them even further, robotic arms whirl around the pallets, wrapping them in layers of cellophane for stability during shipping and unloading. Finally, the freshly bottled orange juice is loaded onto refrigerated trucks, one pallet at a time, ensuring it stays cool and fresh on its journey to store shelves. Soon, these bottles will find their way into kitchens across the country, ready to deliver a bright burst of sunshine to breakfast tables everywhere. Whether you love it silky smooth, bursting with pulp, fresh, or from concentrate, every glass carries the incredible story of its journey. From orchard to table, it's no wonder orange juice remains the undisputed king of breakfast drinks. Thanks for joining us on this amazing journey from grove to glass. If you enjoyed learning about how your favorite OJ is made, be sure to hit that like button subscribe for more behind the scenes stories, and share this video with a fellow orange juice lover. Until next time, stay fresh, stay curious, and we'll see you in the next video.